Hi everybody, Jo here again. How are you doing? I hope you're keeping well. Um, thank you for all your lovely messages and um, emails and texts. You're very kind. You're a lovely bunch on here. So just to say thank you in case I forget. Um, it's lovely to have your company again. It's Tuesday, so it's time for our crafty catch up. And I've had a few people messaging me asking me about the scenescapes. So what I thought we'd do is this is the card that we're going to create today and it's using one of our scenescapes. Now, these are fabulous, whether you're a newbie crafter or whether you're a seasoned crafter alike. And what they are, I mean, look at these, they come in all different, um, I was going to say shapes and sizes, but actually that's not far wrong. This is the one we're going to be using today and they've all got different names. This one is Moonlight Glow. But look at this, I've got to be honest, this one here and this one is called, I wish I could learn the names, but you know what I'm like, I just make something up random, uh, Snowy Silence. Now that is perfect for Christmas cards. And the good thing is you, you add your own stamping, you could add inks, you can add colour, but it just for me is a time saver. But I'm still doing that personal touch to it. I mean, again, look at that. Of course, that one I've used a lot of, that's Orange Hues. That's one of my favourites because obviously I have a think about orange. But there are just so many. And look, you can tell how much I like this one. I've actually got, I was getting near, you get four in each pack and I've only got one left. So I had to order another. Again, perfect for Christmas cards. But honestly, check them out. I mean, look at that. If you need a mail card, imagine a wolf sat there howling at the moon and great for those last minute cards. And if you're anything like me, our younger son, Mikey, has a habit of saying, Mum, can you make me a card? Yeah, Mikey, when do you need it? Um, well, I was going to pop and see you in an hour. Can it be ready for then? And bless him, that's what he's like. So these are perfect. And there's a whole section on the website called Scenescapes. There we go, look. Scenescapes. Now, like I say, if you're a newbie crafter, these are brilliant. Don't get me wrong, I love making my own backgrounds, as you know, but I think you need some of these in your craft life. Again, if nothing else but for emergency cards. Now, like I say, this is the one we're going to be using. And I think I'm going to have to order another pack. Oh no, we've got a spare one, look. I thought it was on my last one. Are you, are you like me? I get nervous if I get to the last one. <laughs> To make sure I order some more and look at that like I say don't need to do much to it before we start the card I just thought I'd point out and let you know I've got um, a tag die and there's lots of tag dies on the market and look you can cut out of that one scenescape two gorgeous dies I mean obviously it depends what size your die cuts are but even if you did it by hand with scissors as we've done in a, in a previous um YouTube but look at that so what I actually did here was and again just because I like a nice cohesive I went and actually stamped a similar design on my tag because my idea is that then I can send this put it on my as my gift tag and this is my card and again, how lovely. So if I show you the other. So what I'm thinking is, so the sample card I do today, this topper can go with one of these. So that can be my card and gift tag. And then here for another friend, I've got a card and gift tag. And how lovely is that? And again, just beautiful and so personal. So again, if you're somebody who wants to explore other avenues rather than just making cards, like I say, make yourself some lovely gift tags. And just to have part of the moon on there, I think works really well. So I'm going to pop those to one side. Now with this, I purposely have left um, a space for a sentiment. I haven't stamped a sentiment on here because I don't know quite who I'm going to send this to. This is going to be one of those emergency cards ready for when Mr. Mikey wants one. So, um, so hence no sentiment. But I could easily add a sentiment here. Or I could even decoupage a sentiment across the middle. And I like to do that just because it gives me lots of options then. So if we start start with our scenescape. And we're going to start with some stamping. And what I did was I got my VersaFine Claire ink pads out. And I'm going to use Nocturne because I'd like the black against this beautiful, some silhouette stamping. And we have got some sort of black 
here. But also I wanted to go with the blue hues. So I had a look at my ink pads in blue and I've got Warm Breeze and I've got Blue Bell. So I'm going to use those two colours as well, just to add a little bit more interest. And we'll start with some stamping and we'll put our beautiful fairies on. And these are from the Fairy Foragers set. And this lovely one here is kneeling and I thought that was just perfect for her there. We're going to do her in black. And as always, I've got my copy of paper just because for me, it's my little safety blanket. I think we all need those things. At the minute, I seem to need a bigger safety blanket than ever, but that's what happens, isn't it? And again, I've just caught up there, so I'm just going to get Mr Inky Binky to do his, his bit. Now, I may put my head over because I just want to make sure that she's actually kneeling on there. And again, it's a silhouette. Now, these papers are beautiful to stamp on. But again, with a silhouette, it's worth just letting that ink soak in, lift up, and there we go. I've gone a bit, bit low with her there, but don't worry, we can get round that. I'll be honest and show you. So if that happens, I'm just going to get and just alter this landscape here and add. I could have stopped this and redone it and stamped her a bit higher, but you know what? It's good that you see what we do when things like that happen. So I'm just going to ink that and just come in with a little bit of my, my Sharpie just to darken that. And you know what? By the time we've finished, nobody will ever know she'll be fine. So don't ever worry if that happens. That's because I was scared of putting my head over. I didn't want you to see the top of my head. But like I say, that's the beauty of doing these things live. You know, we don't just stop and redo it and say to you, it's all got to be perfect because, you know, we're all human. And at the minute, I'm going through one of those phases where everything I do, something goes wrong. So in a way, it's good to show you. But I think by the time I get my stamping, my foliage here, she'll still be kneeling. OK, you won't be able to see her legs, but it's fine. Do you know what? It's one of those things. You just get on with it. And I'm certainly not throwing my scenescape away. So we have to find ways around these things. And in a way, that's what I want to show you because, you know, some people, a couple of ladies messaged me and said that they're really scared of almost stamping on it in case anything goes wrong because obviously they've paid for the scenescape. So like I say, there's ways around it. Now we'll just put her, this beautiful one with the lamp here. And again, straight down, hold let that ink soak in and lift up. Yeah, she's lovely. I'm happy with her. We don't have to alter her. She's fine. <laughs> so let's add some of this beautiful foliage. And again, by adding the foliage, we can distract from this. So let's go, first of all, for the wildflower. I love this stamp. And this one, I'm going to carry on and just use the black, the Nocturne. So I'm just going to turn this sideways. And this is such a beautiful silhouette. And I love, because we've got some dark stamping here, and I'm almost going to use this one to frame the design. And again, straight down. A few crafters have asked if, if it's a slippy surface like acetate. Well, it isn't. It's beautiful to stamp on. But again, just be firm. Because it is a wee bit shiny, it, the ink, I've found personally, the ink does take a little bit longer to dry. So, but you know me, I like to block mine and heat with a heat tool anyway, belt and braces. So, not a problem. And I'm working away from it and then towards me, so I have less chance, as I say, of smudging it. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. The old throat's playing up again. Right, and we'll just add, I don't want this to look symmetrical, so I want this side. I think we'll have more. Let's go for, and that's the thing when you're doing something like this. Try not to make it look too contrived. So I don't want these to be, you know, symmetrical of each other. So if we put more, if we're going to have more of the wildflowers on this side. <clears throat> and we'll just put another one there. And in fact, we'll just put a little angle of that one. And if I bring it this way, 
can you see how that's lovely and it's framing and it's keeping on with these hues and, and I think that's really framing it well. So we'll give that a wipe. Again, I just wipe the stamp with water and then dry it with my inky binky and pop it back on the acetate just for me so I don't get dirty finger marks. Now I'm going to come in next with a beautiful little stamp. It's a lavender stamp. And I just thought this would be, again, it's a lovely silhouette, but it's not as um, dark and there's not as much foliage. It's quite delicate. So I'm coming in with this blue bell colour. And I'm thinking, let's just have some lavender there. And just where got a space there I'm just gonna put a little bit yeah that just fills that nicely and then maybe if we just angle a little bit there so let's see this side we'll have some there and I don't want much lavender this side so I want it to be more lavender this side and more of the wild um, flower that side a little bit just to tie it together Think what about one there, just the head of one, I think. And again, if I turn it round, yeah, I like that. So again, quick wipe of the stamp. And again, it just shows you don't need a lot of different um, stamps for this. You know, use the stamps you've got. Now I'm going to bring the field grass in. Now we've got the orchard grass and that would do the same. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is just with my copy of paper, is just give it a bit of a blot. Just because I don't want to smudge that stamping that we've already done. And let me have a look. Yes, you see, look, there's quite a lot of ink come off there. So as I say, the ink, it does dry a bit slower. So that's something to just be aware of. Now, if you want, not sure where your field grass, where to stamp this again, use your acetate and have a look. My idea is here where I've done that. I might just put a bit of field grass look just to distract. And I think that would look really pretty. And the field grass is so delicate. And also I'm going to change colour and that's when I'm going to come in with the warm breeze. So, and this is a lovely one for adding a bit of height. So again, I'm thinking I'll just put the edge there. See how pretty that looks and it almost picks up this colour. And then we'll add a little bit. We don't want to overcook it with this, but we want it to sort of complement the whole design, but not take over. And the field grass and the orchard grass are so good at this. Now you see, so I'm happy with that side, how that's built up. So then we'll work on this side. Fabulous for just distracting your eye. So let's just give a little, yep, yeah, I like that. Because that bit was just annoying me because I know I've added. I've added that bit of black ink there and in my head I know that you see so this grass is just helping distract away from that and I'm thinking just one peeping through there and then we'll go one at the top here let me have a look what do you think I think that's building up nicely, isn't it? And what's lovely is you can still see through, look. We've not obliterated that water, but we can still see through. So again, I'll give that stamp a bit of a wipe. <clears throat> and just pop that back on. And then for the top, I want a nice delicate stamp. So I've gone for the um, Bellflower Vine. I just adore this stamp. I wanted a bit of something, but I didn't want it to be too heavy. I must admit, this is I use this so much, this stamp. I'm going for black with this. Just to keep that, because I've got some black stamping at the base, I just think it will balance it nicely. And I don't want all of this on. Just peeping onto the moon there. 
and again a nice firm stamp and then lift straight up there we go bit of a wipe now because if I show you here look I've got a little tail here and I'm not happy with that so let me just get another piece of paper let me just block this I know you probably think I go over the top worrying but believe you me if one of these I get to this point and I smudge it and my look at the minute that would happen you know sometimes things do happen like that don't they look you've still got it's amazing how much you know you have days where everything sails through beautiful and then other days where just oh nightmare so for me I don't like that bit just hanging and I could have kept it further up but I wouldn't have got this beautiful flower here so all I'm going to do again with my fine liner is just extend that there and then you see how we've got these lovely squiggly bits so do you know what let's just add a squiggly bit there we go now to me nobody will know that Tracy in fact let's just do another squiggly bit there that Tracy hasn't that, has, that isn't part of the stamp and that's the beauty of these designs it gives you areas where you can carry on and I have to say I love that built up so and, and how quickly was that so what I'm going to do now is just, as I say, belt and braces, ladies and gents. Just bring out the heat tool. And again, heat front and back. And these are beautiful, look, the white on the back. So you don't have to choose which side, like, you know, when you get that double printed papers. And we just want to add some nice little finishing tricks now. And I want to add some colour to my vine here. So what I've got is I've got my Posca and this is one of those sparkly ones. And what I'm going to do is just on my block here, so give it a good shake. I'm just going to get some of the that lovely sparkle Posca. And I've got my paintbrush. Again, my favourite one, number one. Look how dirty I must clean this handle. And I'm just going to pick up and again, I may just get my head over, so I do apologise. A little bit of this. Again, roll your brush just because it keeps that nice point. And let's just add a little bit of the lovely sparkly Posca. And again, with it being the blue and even on the leaves, look, I could add green leaves, but I want to keep it all tone on tone. So I just want to go for the blues. As you know, I adore well, I was going to say painting. I think I can paint with just about anything. But for me, it's just my favourite thing to do, and especially to add colour. I think we all have our little things, don't we, that we go to. Mine's definitely painting, whether it be inks, the sprays, my re-inkers. I think everything I can just pick up and use this lovely paintbrush. There we go, that's very pretty. And just to add some of that tone down here, let's just add a little bit in the wings. And if you're worried about your Posca sometimes flicking bits, if you're picking it up on your brush look, you're in control and you can put the Posca exactly where you want it. So if we want any on these lovely grasses here, look, for me, I just find it easier to dab it on with my paintbrush. And I know some of you do fight with your, your Posca with its splats. So this is a lovely way of just adding it exactly where you want it. And we'll just add a couple over here, a couple over there. And then what we'll do is we've got the yellow as well. And this is a sparkly one. So again, we'll get a bit of the yellow sparkle. And I'm only putting it here on my acrylic block because just to save my mat. And I'm just going to pick a little bit of the yellow up and we'll add a little bit of the yellow here. And maybe a couple of little dots round. There we go. That's pretty. And then let's add some highlight on our flowers. So I'll tell you what, so for those of you who struggle with your white Posca, because again, that can have a mind of its own, can't you? 
So again, let's get our paintbrush and then let's just add some little, and I don't want to go over the top, just want to catch a little bit, so it'll be at the top here. My moon's here, so it'll just be catching. And let's just add a little bit of highlight here. And again, we'll add a little bit on her hair and maybe a little bit just on the top here. And this way, it is so much easier. And if you're doing a couple of projects, your Posca will actually stay on your acrylic block for quite a while before it dries. And just maybe on this one. Again, I don't want to overcook it. I don't want to go on every single one because I want it to look like highlights rather than on everything. Yeah, I like that. So I'll pop the, that back in there. I'll put that to one side because I'll save that ink for later. And that's certainly starting to look really pretty, isn't it? So last little thing, let's just add a bit of sparkle to the moon. So I'm going to come in with this beautiful... Oh, sorry, Eric's under my table. Can you hear him snoring? <laughs> it's quite funny. I actually did a, a Lavinia workshop in um, in Plymouth um, earlier this month and Eric was with me, so he came in. So he did meet some of the ladies. So for any of the ladies that were at the workshop and you met Eric, he's here under my table again, snoring away. Um, so this is the White Fine Pearl Medium. Lovely pastel to use this. And again, I've got my applicator and I'm just going to come in and add a little bit. Just want to add, I'm just going to use my finger to rub it, just to add a bit more sheen. And again, it's just to show you that your, your pastel works beautiful on here. Your glitter will work well. I just don't want to add any more glitter because I'm not sure who I'm sending this to. So I don't want it to be too glittery. And I'm just going to add a little bit more sparkle around the orbs. And just across the water here, not on all of them, but just a few of them. And again, by rubbing it in with my finger, it does two things. For me, it softens the edges, which I prefer, but also it helps to set it. Because I'm only putting pastel in a small area, I'm not going to spray this. I don't need to set it. But if I lift this up, and hopefully, can you see the sheen? It's a bit hard with the light because obviously this is quite shiny. But you can see the sheen here. And again, that just adds to it. So it just shows you that you can add, just by some very quick stamping and adding some of our little effects, you've got a most beautiful scene. So if I bring in the one that we made earlier, she says as she knocks the light. Oh, I've told you, one day you might get a professional on here. And here's the one that we've made today. Now, again, that's just on the back of the card. But this one, I did put a black matte and layer. But I think you could even add a blue. Again, the colour choice is yours. So there are the two. And if I bring in our two little tags just to give you an idea as well so like i say if you've not tried these scenescapes you can very quickly and easy come up with the most beautiful design and you have done it you've stamped on it you've added ink you can blend, blend ink around the edges beautifully this one i didn't need to because i actually like these edges as they are but I hope you got some inspiration from that. And if you haven't had a look at them, go and have a little peruse and see if there's anything there that takes your fancy. All I do is add a couple of packs every time I put an order in. And then I've got my nice little stash to look through when I need that emergency card. So thanks for joining me today. Thank you as always. You take care, everybody. Much love and hugs from me. Bye for now. <laughs>